Welcome to ETH, news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. Here at End Time Headlines, our mission is to inform our listeners of the times and seasons in which we are in. In Luke 21, 28, we are told when you begin to see all these things come to pass, lift up your heads, your redemption is drawing near. And now, founder and pastor of End Time Headlines, Ricky Scapero. So, all right, guys, so I want to welcome everybody today. Uh, again, I'm Ricky Scaparo, the founder, the pastor, and the voice of End Time Headlines. It is about 12 p.m. Eastern Time, January 22nd on this Monday afternoon. So it's good to see many familiar faces that will be on here now uh, and that will continue to come on here either by YouTube or by Facebook. So we're going to get right into this thing because I want to be respectful. I know a lot of people are going to lunch right now. They're coming back from lunch, whatever the case may be. Uh I hope everybody uh, it's there. And I know many of you guys are still on your fast. Uh, some of you started on the seventh. And uh, if you went to 21 days or like myself and many others, we began on the first of January. Some of you will are going to go on and go 40 days or some of you are just starting, whatever the case may be. Um, if you're continuing on your prayer and fasting, uh, we're going to continue to pray with you, continue to agree with you, uh, that, to see your breakthroughs come and be manifest in your life. And I believe God is working and moving on the behalf of many individuals, uh, and I'm excited about that. So we did our whole series. We completed that on Friday. Um, you can go back on our archives, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. And you can go through our uh, under messages. You can go through and find all those archived there, or you can go to uh, YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel at End Time Headlines or Ricky Scaparo. You can find that as well and find all of our messages there, our whole series of fasting. So today we're going to start a brand new series. This will probably be a two part series. Um, so this is going to be part one. And we're going to be talking about the life of Abraham. Um, so I want to talk to you today about the key to Abraham's favor with God. Have you ever asked yourself, uh, if, you, if you'll click, if you'll push the screen, guys, if you guys have no sound, if you'll just touch the screen on there, then you'll get the sound on your tablet or mobile device or whatever it is. You just, you have to tap on the screen and you should have sound there. So have you ever asked yourself, what was the key to Abraham's favor with God? Now, when, when I, when I say favor with God, what do I mean? Well, if you go to the book of Genesis chapter 12, and that's going to be our foundation today, um, it tells you when you begin to read Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 13, 14 and onward about the life of Abram or Abraham as he becomes, um, we learn many things. Number one, the, God raises him up to be a great nation and out of his seed would be a great nation. Number two, he would be blessed upon the earth. Number three, his name would be great or he, he would have great notoriety, great influence, and he would be greatly promoted by the Lord. Number four, God raised him up to be a great blessing to others. Number five is he had great influence in such, uh, he had such great influence that the Lord even spoke to him in Genesis chapter 12 that those who would bless him would be blessed of God, but those who chose to curse him would be cursed of God. So how many believes, listen, how many believes you've got favor with God and you've got a really strong relationship with God when you get to a point in your walk with God when someone curses you, someone speaks against you, someone slanders you, somebody tries to defame you, and it's like poking God in his very eye. This is what God told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. He said, I'll bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you. And God's that. That decree has never ended. It was not replaced by the church as many replacement theologists teach, which is a doctrine of heresy. Okay, but I don't want to get on that today. Again, we're going to talk about what was the key to Abraham's favor with God. Abraham's intimacy with God resulted in many things. And that's what we're going to talk about in this part and our second part. And the main key, here it is, the main key to Abraham's favor with God was his obedience to God. So if you're taking notes today and you want to write that down, you can. Again, obedience 
was the great key to Abraham's favor with God. So how many would like to have this kind of favor in your walk with God? I don't know. Maybe you don't today, but I do. I would like to know that God's going to make a great name out of of my lineage, out of my seed, and out of my bloodline. I would like to know that God's going to bless me not only in heaven, but here on the earth. I would like to know that God would give me great influence and notoriety to preach the gospel. I would like to know that God's going to bless me exceedingly abundantly above all that I can even ask or think so that I could be a great abundant blessing to others. I would like to know that I have a relationship with my heavenly father, that he calls me a friend of God. Come on, somebody. Jesus said, from here forth on, I will no longer call you disciples but I will call you friends. So I don't know about you guys, but I want to become a friend of God. All right? So this didn't just happen overnight. This didn't just fall in Abraham's lap. This just this wasn't a draw out of a hat. This all came as a direct derivative or a direct result of Abraham's obedience to God. Say somebody say this with me. Say obedience is greater than sacrifice. Oh, come on. Let me say it again. Obedience is greater than sacrifice. So we here we have three things right off the bat that the Lord speaks to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, that Abraham has a choice whether to obey God or he has a choice to not obey God. And as a result of Abraham's choices, his destiny came to fruition. Come on, somebody. Here it is. Number one, if you're taking note, Notes, the Lord speaks to Abram and tells him to leave his place of familiarity, come out of your place of com comfortability or your comfort and your familiarity. Let me read this. In Genesis chapter 12, now the Lord had spoken to Abram and says, get out of your country and from your family and from your father's house. Okay, so I want to tell you something today. If we ever expect to do anything great with God, anything of significance with God, we have got to be willing to step out of our comfort zone. We've got to step out of what we're familiar with, where there's going to come a time we're going to have to, to leave that which we're uh, accustomed to. We're going to have to choose to walk by faith and not by sight. Come on, somebody. So God speaks to Abram and says, Abram, I know you're comfortable here. I know everything is good here. You know how the day is going to go. It wakes up every day. Come on, some of you, you guys, your alarm goes off every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you work Monday through Friday, it goes off at the same time. You get up, you have your same routine. You do your same things. You take the same route. To, you have one or two routes that you take to work, but it's just, it's like the movie Groundhog Day. You do the same thing. You drink the same stuff. You eat and cycle and rotation of your same meals, you, you meet the same people, more than likely you talk pretty much predominantly about the same things every single day at work. So somebody say routines. We have routines. But listen, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. So I don't know about you. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but you, uh, you've you been believing God for great things. Maybe you're still in the fast. You've come out of the fast, and now you're waiting for the blessings. You're waiting for the breakthroughs. You're, waking, you're waiting for things to come to fruition of God. But friends, I'm going to tell you something. It's going to take something on our parts. If you think everything's just going to show up at our doorstep, money's going to show up in a mailbox, a raven's going to come by and drop a job application off. Come on, somebody. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. Everything's just going to fall in your lap. you got another thing coming. You've got to step out. Somebody say step out. Abraham had to step out of his country, step out of what he was familiar with, step out of his comfort zone. And here he gets even, and he didn't, God takes it to another level. He says, not only do I want you to get out of your house, I want you to get away from your family. Come on. You can't, Oh, come on, somebody. We can't cleave unless we leave. We've got to choose. We've got to choose to leave in order for us to cleave. See, some of you, there's so many people I've met and they get married 
and they don't go through proper counseling, they don't go through the proper procedures, and they get married for the wrong reasons, or they, they rush things, and they, they, they rush to, get to, to cleave, but all the while they're trying to cleave, they never made the choice to leave. See, so they drag their parents in a situation. They're still living at their mama's house, they're still living with their parents' house, they're still, come on, they're married, they've got kids, they've got all this, but they're still living in their mom and daddy's basement. Come on, they're still living under their roof, they're not paying any rent they're not doing this and doing that and then there's all this strife and contention in their family come on family dysfunction and if you and, and, and a lot of times if you begin to analyze things it's because they chose to cleave but they never they never chose to leave so you've got to leave in order to cleave and I'm gonna let me break this down and make this more spiritual for you if we're ever going to have a relationship with God to where we where, where it shadows Abraham, where he had a close, and I'm really going to show you this in the second part, not so much on this part, but on the second part of this series, we're going to, I'm going to show you where Abraham had such a walk of intimacy with God, and it's going to be powerful. But again, you've got to choose to leave some, there's some things you've got to leave behind that you can't take with you in your journey with God. Come on, you, you're, you're going to have to leave some old friends behind. You're going to have to leave some old habits behind. You're going to have to leave some of that of those old addictions behind. You're going to have to leave some old stuff behind and leave some of that stuff in the past for you to be successful and be fulfilled in your future. Okay, so number one, again, Abraham was told to leave his country. Number two, he was told to leave his family. And watch this. And number three, and come out from your father's house. See, as a father myself, I have two sons. And I'm trying to raise them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. I'm trying to raise them up in the way in which they should go, that when they're older, they shall not depart from it. So while they're under my roof, under my supervision, and under my spiritual authority, it is my responsibility as the spiritual priest of my home to pour out into them the word of God and to be an example unto them in my relationship with my heavenly Father through my prayer, my devotional time, my reading of the word, my dedication, and how I live my life. But this will only go on for so long until they reach the age of adolescence or they reach the age of adulthood and then they must get out from their father's house and then have their own walk with God. Did you know this is the same with our, with our walk with our heavenly father? Did you know that there, when we first get saved, come on somebody, when we first get saved and we come out of the womb, I guess you could say, and we're spiritual babes in Christ, we desire the milk of the word. So, you know, the milk of the word. Uh, Paul said over here in the book of, I'm not going to turn there, but I don't have this in my notes, but Paul said it like this. He said, uh, he talks about the elementary principles of God. He says, therefore, let us move on past the elementary principles of God and let's go on to more mature things. And then Paul speaks to the church of Corinth and he says, I desire to, to, to feed you meat, the meat of the word or more mature things, but because there's strife and there's division and there's discord among you, he said, I can't feed you the meat. I have to give you the milk because you are untrained in the word of God and you're not ready for the meat of the word. So when we're babes in Christ, we desire the milk of the word. But then as we grow and as we mature and as we're rooted and grounded in our faith, rooted and grounded in him, and we're growing in the stature of Christ and the word of knowledge and the word of his, of his power and his might. And we begin to mature in the spirit of God, the fruits of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit. And we begin to learn these things. Then we move and transition from the milk stage to the meat stage. So this is how it is with our heavenly father. He desires us to follow him for a season, but then he wants us to walk with him. See, there's a difference between following somebody and walking with someone. Oh, come on. I'm going to get there in just a second. I'm going to show you this. Okay, now let's move on to number three. And then the Lord spoke to Abram and he says, quote, again, get out from your country, get out from your family, get out from your father's house into a land that I will show you. In other words, you've got to get, you, once you get past these things, did you know that most Christians, a lot of Christians can't get past these three things? 
But if we ever get to a point where we can get out from what our, our familiarity and get out of our comfort zone and leave our father's house, come on somebody, and go out from our family and begin to walk on our own, then the Lord says, then I will show you a land that is not yet seen. This is called walking by faith and not by sight. Come on, this is where, can I say it like this? This is where the real excitement of our relationship with God is. See, and this is why a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to serve God. I don't want to go to church. I don't like reading the Bible. I don't want to do anything with Christianity because it's boring. It's um, it's just religion and it's boring. Oh, friends, listen, religion is boring. But when you have a relationship with God and you begin to wake up every day and you pray things like, God, I thank you today for this is the day in which the Lord has made and I choose to rejoice in it and be glad. God, I'm asking that you order my steps today. God, I give you permission to use me today as your vessel and as your mouthpiece and as your instrument. And I give you permission today to, to divine divinely order my steps and bring about divine assignments of God in my life today. Lord, you said my steps are ordered of the Lord. When you begin to ask God and give him permission to set you up that day and set you in a path of people that need to hear the gospel, friend, there is nothing boring about the gospel because I'm telling you, God will send people in your path that are hurting. He'll send the homeless. He'll send the widows. He'll send the orphans. He'll, he'll send the spiritual abused people. He'll send the atheists, the agnostics. He'll send everybody in your path if he knows he can trust you be, to be obedient, to preach the gospel as you've asked him to send Set you up to do so. But when you're walking in religion where you're just going to church to punch the clock, to get your time in, to get your presence known, and everybody knows you're there, and then you leave the church the same way you came in the church, and there's no change, there's no evidence, there's no fruit. Come on, somebody. There's no passion, there's no desire, there's no, there's no fire, and there's no evident fruits. To, to, to show the account of your salvation and your walk with God, then of course it's going to be boring. Come on, somebody. So watch this. He says, Abram, if you'll do this, I'm going to show you a land that you don't even know that you're aware of. And watch what he says. I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. Come on, I'm in the book, Genesis chapter 12. I'm going to make your name great. And you are going to be a blessing. Oh, I know your whole life, you've always been uh, a beggar. You've been a recipient. You've always been one that have to receive. But don't you believe? Come on, it's, start, it's time that you start believing that God can turn it around and bless you to where you're no, lo no longer on the recipient end, but you're on the giving end. Come on, now you can start giving. Now you can start distributing. Now you can start praying. Now you can start blessing. Now you can start entering seating. Now you can be the head and not the tail. And you can be above and not beneath. And now you can lend and not borrow in Jesus name. So he says, Abram, I know you as Abram, but when I'm done with you, you're going to be Abraham. Golly, I felt that in my spirit. I felt like that was a word from somebody. God knows you as Abram, but he's getting ready to change you to Abraham. Some of y'all started out on this fast as Abram, but when it's all said and done, you're going to come out on the other end as Abraham. Come on, you started out as Jacob. You started out as a deceiver. You started out as as one who was uh, uh, was evil, had evil intentions, you had uh, dysfunction. You were all messed up. But by the time you're done on the other end of this thing and you're done wrestling with God and you finally submit to God and you're obedient to God, Come on, J Jacob, you come in as Jacob, but you're going to come out as Israel. Come on, you came in as Saul, but when God's done with you, friend, you're going to come out as Paul and preaching the gospel and be unashamed. 
Watch this. So he says, I'm going to, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. You shall be a blessing. And then he says, and I'm going to make it so evident around you, Abram, that everybody that chooses to partner with you, everybody chooses to be on your side and choose to bless you. They're going to see the blessings of God flow in their life. They're going to see God's favor in their life. But I'm going to tell you this. He says, but I feel sorry for those who come against you, Abram. I feel sorry for those who give you, come on, this stab you in the back, say wrong against you, that try to defame you, try to speak slander against you, try to speak defamation against you, and try to sow discord against you. They try to curse you because those who curse you shall be cursed. Do you believe that today, friends? Come on, if God be for us, who can be against us? And he says, in you, in you. Somebody say in me. In me, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And you say, oh, I, I don't believe that. Listen, friends, God wants to bless your family and your children and your children's children and your children's children's children. It's the will of God that we be a blessing to the point where our seed is fruitful. Our seed multiplies. Our seed, is, our seed impacts nations. It impacts generations in Jesus name. So watch this. So he has this conversation with the Lord and he gives, he lays it out for him. He, and then watch this. Uh, here's what I want to show you. All right. So it says that Abram departed as the Lord spoke to him and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years of age. How old was he? He was 75 so I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. It's not a factor. And he departed from Haran. And then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions they had gathered, and they, and they departed to the land of Canaan. Okay, now watch this. Verse 7, So the Lord appeared to Abram and said to your descendants, I will give this land. So here he is. He's having another conversation with Abram, and he's still, God still pouring out blessings. He's still speaking destiny. He's still speaking the greatness of his will over Abram. And he says, to your descendants, I will give this land. Look around, Abram. Look, this is what I want to give you. This is what I want to bless you with. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, Come on, the house of God. He pitched his tent with Bethel on the west of Ai on the east. He built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Now watch this, verse 13. Let's go on down here. Uh, let me go to verse 1. Then Abram went up from Egypt. He and his wife and all that he had and Lot was with him to the south. And Abram was very rich in livestock in silver and gold. Come on, he wasn't scraping by. He wasn't in poverty. He, the Bible says he was very rich. He had silver, gold, and possessions. Come on, it's the Bible. It's what it says. Now watch. In fact, in verse 6, it says the land was not able to support Abraham and Lot because they, they were so great in possessions and so great in influence. And influence. here's where I want to get with this. Watch this. So they had to split. Abraham came to a place and every one of you, you listen to me, every single person under the sound of my voice, every one of us, we will get to a place in our walk with God where our circles get smaller and smaller and people is going to have to separate from us. Let me say that again. The, the, the deeper you get with God, the, the farther you get in him, the higher you go in him, your circles. Come on, I just had this conversation today with a dear friend of mine on the telephone. And we, I talked about how when we were in high school, when we were in middle school, we had, a, we had all kinds of friends. And I remember my parents used to tell me and, old, and older folks used to say, enjoy it while you can. Because when you get older, as, as life goes on, your circle of friends will get smaller and smaller and smaller. And oh, how true that is, friend. And I, I, here I am, 41 years of age, and I can count on one hand all my true friends that have been there through thick and thin 
been through the good, the bad, come on, the ups, the downs, uh, when, when, when I had nothing and when I had something, come on, when I was, when I was, you know, whatever the case may be, I call, you know, but all the fair weather friends, you know, the ones that are there when the sun's shining, when you got money in your pocket, when you got something to offer them, when it benefits them, they're always there at your doorstep, they're always around, but you know, they're called fair weather friends, but when you have nothing to offer them, the well dries up, come on somebody, the brook dries up, you have nothing to, to, to help them benefit them whatever they, then you will see who your true friends are friends so your circle becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and then I'm going to take a step farther that's life whether you're a Christian or whether you're not a Christian whether you're a believer or whether you're not a believer whether you have a covenant with God or whether you don't have a covenant with God that's life in general that is a part of the circle of life about the circle getting smaller and smaller but now I want to take it a step further it, but God himself in your life in my life he will step in and he will begin to divide us and separate us from people and from influences that are going to hinder us or keep us or prevent us from to that I call it the Mount Moriah experience that Mount Moriah experience that experience where Abram went there and he discovered who really God was and he discovered that he was Jehovah Jireh he was the Lord our provider he discovered there he saw a glimpse into the future and saw I believe with all my heart he caught a vision of Jesus Christ that would be the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, being the offering that would be laid upon that wood at Calvary. But before he ever got to that place, God speaks to him and he says, it's time to make a separation. I remember many years ago in my walk with God, um, a dear brother of mine, we were brothers in the Lord. I mean, this, this uh, he was like, my right hand man, this uh, this individual, he he, gleaned, he poured into me. He, ra he he taught me a lot of the elementary principles of Christ. There was a lot of things that he taught me and poured into me. But as as we begin, as I began to mature in the Lord, and as time went on, something. And some of y'all's heard this story, but some something happened with him and his walk with God. He began to backslide. He began to fall away from God. He began to go back into the world. He began to go back into those things. The Bible says, uh, it talks about, you know, uh, going back into like a dog that returns to his own vomit. Uh, it talks about uh, hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering for his faithful promise. But then it says, hold fa stand fast in the liberty and wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So as time went on, he began to drift away and go back into he began to drink again he began to go back into these bondages again he began to he began I, I noticed he was no longer going to church anymore he didn't want to be in the word anymore his come on his language began to change vulgarity was just freely coming out of his out of his mouth he was again so it was a slow process of time and then during that process the lord i remember i'll never forget this the lord spoke to me and says it's time to separate from him and I didn't want to receive this guys I didn't want to hear this because I was very there was there was a very um it was like Jonathan and David we were like one soul because this is the guy who led me to the Lord this is the guy that poured out into me this is the guy that uh was discipling me but then I was watching this guy begin to fall away so the Lord kept dealing with me. It's time to separate. It's time to cut the cord. It's time to come out from among him and go your separate ways. And I didn't want to do it. I kept resisting against it. Kept resisting against it. Resisting against it. And eventually, fast forward, uh, uh, as time went on, eventually he came out and professed uh, to me that he was again no longer serving the Lord and he was he was uh, living a very abominable lifestyle of sexual immorality and everything and it absolutely crushed me and it broke my heart and I'll, I'll never forget that I fell to my knees in my bedroom and was broken before the Lord and and the Lord spoke to me when it was all when all the dust settled the Lord spoke to me and said I, you could have spared yourself a lot of heartache if you would have listened to me back when, when I told you to, to separate yourself. So, and as a result of me not being obedient 
to God to separate from this individual, it caused a lot of hardship. It caused a lot of pain that was not, um, that, that could have been nowhere near the level it was just simply for the fact that I was resisting God. Come on. Listen, I'm telling you, friends, God is going to speak to a lot of you. If he's not doing it, if he's not done it before, he's doing it now. And if he's not doing it then, if he's not doing it now, he will. He, there's no way that the Bible says, how can any two walk together lest they be agreed? Amos chapter 3, verse 2. The Bible talks about being not unequally yoked with non-believers. Now, I know preachers want to get up and they want to use that illustration for marriage. And, and, it, and it does fit that, that an unbeliever should not marry a believer and vice versa. So we, I, get, I have no uh, disagreement with that. But let's take it a step further. If you really study out what that really means when it says that we are not to be, to be unequally yoked with non-believers, to be unequally yoked, friends, is to be running with someone who's not on the same level with you. They don't, they don't have the same vision with you, the same passion as you, and so on and so forth. So they're actually weighing you down. They're pulling you back. They're slowing your progress. They're preventing you from making the, 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 uh, the healthy progression that you need to make. Does everybody understand that? So God is absolutely going to call you to separate from people, whether it be in your family, come on, whether it be your friends, whether it be co-workers, whatever the case may be, there is going to come a separation process. So here we have the Lord speak to Abram, and he says, you and Lot are going to have to split. So Abraham did the right thing. He looked at Lot, and he says, Lot, look, you can choose wherever you want to go. And if you go east, I'll go west. If you go left, I'll go right. But we're, we've got to go, we've got to part our separate ways. And we know as a result, here, here's what it says in verse 14. And the Lord said to Abram after, now watch, here, this is so powerful, guys. Now somebody say after. Again, after, after Abraham separated from Lot. Verse 14. Now watch, as a direct result of Abraham and Lot separating, here's what happened to Abraham. As a result of his obedience to God after his separation of Lot. Verse 14. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, my Lord, I, I just got to stop right here because I felt the Holy Ghost. I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, tell people that, there's a lot of things that God has been wanting to speak to you, but he can't do it until after you've been obedient to what he's telling you to do. Oh, let me say it again. The Lord wants to show you and speak to you many things, but it won't come until after you be obedient to do the things in which he's called you to do or separate from in seasons past or even now. Watch this. And the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from him, quote, lift up your eyes now. Somebody say now. And look from the place where you are, north, south, east, and west. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Now you say, well, wait a minute. Didn't God already tell Abraham this stuff? Friends, you're missing it. He did tell him this. He said, Abraham, I'm going to do all these things. And these things are contingent upon whether you leave your country, leave your family, and until you leave what's familiar. And then, and then he spoke to him again. He says, I'm going to bless you, make you great. I'm going to do this. And then he had to come to another, It's come on, somebody say progressive walk. And then as he progressed in his walk with God, God then came to him and said, all right, you were obedient to that. You left. You, you no longer cleave, or you no longer, you, you had to leave to cleave. You're no longer bound by these things. You're stepping by faith and not by sight. You're going forward. But now, Abraham, I'm going to have to ask you to do something else. I'm going to have to ask you to separate from people in your life that is going to hinder you. And Abraham, I'm sure this wasn't easy, friend. I can tell you it's not easy. And so Abraham had to do and be obedient to what God told him to do. And as a result of this, 
Then God comes to him and says, again, he begins to reaffirm him and assure him of these blessings. And listen to what he says in verse 17. Arise, walk in the land through its length and width, for I will give it to you. And then Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by the tabric trees of Mamre, Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built an altar to the Lord. Somebody say Mamre, Mamre. I probably mispronounced that in Hebrew, but that's all right. But I'm going to tell you what this means. Mamre is means the strength or the fatness or the greatness. Oh, let me say it again. The he says he. The Lord says, rise and dwell by the tabernacle trees of strength, fatness, or greatness. Now, the word Hebron in Hebrew, you ready for this? Means association. Golly. And he said, well, I, I don't get it, pastor. What do you mean? Friends, notice his strength and his growth came from removing his association and dependence from man to God. Oh, you didn't hear me. Let me say it again. See, Mamre and Hebron, there's two Hebrew words here. Mamre means the strength or the greatness or the fatness. And he, Hebron means the association. So again, Abram pitched his tent by the tabernacle trees of strength and greatness in, in association. His strength was connected to association. Golly, his greatness was was connected to his association. I feel the Holy Ghost messing with me. So again, God had to teach this man that his strength, the anointing, come on, the greatness and his growth was not in his association with man, but it was always with God. Whew, come on, that may not do nothing for you, friends, but I'm going to tell you right now, I feel the Holy Ghost messing with me. Listen, if we're ever going to grow and mature in our walk with God, we're going to have to be obedient to the Lord when he calls us out from among them to be separate and pursue that which he's called for us. It is good to have leaders over us. Listen to me. It is good to have those who lead us and guide us and father us, but there will inevitably become, a, there will come a time in our walk with God just like an eaglet in a nest, when we're going to have to leave the comfortability of the nest to pursue and spread our wings and fulfill our destiny with God and learn to walk on our own accord. Hallelujah to the Lord. Come on, do you receive that today? So I want to pray for you today. Again, this is part one. Now, when we come back on here on Wednesday, Lord willing, I'm going to show you part two, and I'm going to show you the results of the intimacy of, that Abram or Abraham had with God. So when we get through these, guys, when, we, when we're obedient to God and we begin to do these things and cut the cord on this and cut the... God, I'm telling you, man, the Holy Spirit is just speaking to me right now. Even as I'm preaching this, God is speaking to my, my own life about obedience and, and things that God is separating me from. It's called sanctification, to, to set yourself apart. And as a result of setting ourselves apart to the work of the Lord, separating ourselves from the things that are holding us back and hindering us, as a result, I want to get you to where we're going Wednesday and show you the direct result of an intimate walk with God that Abraham had that friends I want this I want this so bad in my own life and I know what it's going to cost me and I'm telling you friends if you get this revelation if you're hungry for it the Bible says in uh in Jeremiah 33 3 call unto me and search for me and seek for me and I and I'll and, and he says call unto me and I'll answer thee and show you great and mighty things that you know not of Come on, Jeremiah 33, 3. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, Call unto me and I will answer you. He says, Seek me and search for me with all of your heart and I shall be found by you. So I want to pray for you today. Father in heaven, I thank you by, for every individual that's watching by Facebook, by YouTube. God, I believe there is so many Abrams that are watching this. And God, there's there's Abrams, there's Saul's, and there's Jacob's. And God, they're, they're on the brink of of a transformation. They're on the brink of being transformed from the former to the latter, from the old that's passing away, and behold, all things are becoming new. I thank you that, you, that you're, you're
You're, you're getting ready to graduate them to that next level. God, you're calling them to separate from people. You're calling them to come out from among people from associations and from things you're calling them to leave the places of familiarity and comfortability and those places which they have come accustomed to and they become lazy and fat in in a bad way but you're leaving them you're leading them out of their country out of their father's house they're ready to leave so that they can cleave to you heavenly father and i thank you that god whoever that lot is that lot in their life that lot may not not be a bad person it may th th that lot may not be a toxic person it may not be an evil person but it may be a family member it may be a relative it may be a neighbor a co-worker a friend a good friend whatever the case may be but god there inevitably comes a time when you're calling us to spread our wings, get out of that nest and break from the dependency of man and begin to depend upon you and put our dependency upon you. Lord, I'm reminded when Abram went to Mount Moriah, even when he took Isaac, his firstborn, he had to turn and he looked at his servant and he says, me and the lad have to go higher, but you're going to have to stay behind. My Lord, Whew. See, you've got to tell some people, you're going to have to stay back. You're going to have to stay here. You can't go where I'm going. I choose to go higher in the Lord. I'm choosing to go up Mount Moriah because I want to have that experience Friends, listen, I can preach all day how he is Jehovah Jireh. I can preach how he's Jehovah Rapha. I can preach how he's Jehovah Nisi. I can teach how he's Jehovah Roha. I can teach you all day how he's Jehovah Sick Canoe. But friends, I'm going to tell you, there's a difference between hearing somebody teach about it. There's a difference between hearing somebody talk about it than there is when you actually encounter him. See, you can be sick and hear about how he's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. You can be sick and read about it, hear about it, you could talk about it, but friends, when you ever experience the manifest healing power of God, you can walk away from his healing power and say, no, it's not a matter of if he's Jehovah Rapha, it's not a matter of if I've read about it, if I've heard about it, if I've heard preached about it or taught about it, I know that he is Jehovah Rapha because I was sick, but now I'm healed. I was once diagnosed with this, but now they can't find it. Come on, somebody. Listen, it's one thing to talk about how he's Jehovah Jireh when you've got money in your pocket and when you've got all the bills paid and you can read about it, talk about it, and hear about it. But I'm going to tell you, when you ain't got no way to pay the bills, you don't know where money's going to come from, you just lost your job, you just got laid off, and you can't pay, you can't keep your lights on, and all of a sudden, he shows up at the door, he shows up in a check in the mail, he shows up with a doorbell ring, he shows up with an unexpected blessing, and he reveals reveals himself as Jehovah Jireh. So it's no longer a matter of secondhand information. It's about firsthand revelation. Oh my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Receive that today. And I believe you'll be blessed by this today, guys. Man, thank you, Lord. Man, I really feel the Holy Ghost on this message. And I know when I feel the anointing like this, I know somebody is, is a recipient and receiving this. Come on, walk in this. Be blessed by this. Share this with people that you know needs to hear this message. Share this with as many people as you can. Uh, deliver this message to them, and it'll be a great blessing to them in Jesus' name. So, guys, listen. If you'd like to follow us, if you enjoy messages like this, these are all free. YouTube, Facebook, every message is free. We don't charge any. We don't do CDs, DVDs. We don't charge any uh, for any of these messages, all we ask you to do is be a blessing to this ministry, sow into this ministry, partner with it, whatever the Lord speaks to you to do. Everybody's on different levels of relationship with this ministry. Some of you, this is your home church and God has been speaking to you and you know, uh, what God has called you to be obedient to. As you sow into this ministry, God will bless you in return. If you'd like to know how to do that, if you go to Facebook Live under the description, you're going to see a place right there where you can click on the link to donate electronically. If you wish to give by check or money order, and again, all you guys can see this on YouTube. You can give by check or money order at End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 2312, Clarksville, Indiana, 47131. That is our physical mailing address. And as always, please subscribe, bookmark both our main website, endtimeheadlines.org 
endtimeheadlines.com. This is why you can catch all of our news and headlines from a prophetic perspective, all the information, and you'll get messages like this that will come in your inbox in that digest that comes out every one, one day, every night, one digest. You'll get all this information and you won't miss anything uh, that our ministry uh, is, is, uh, is giving you guys. So you can click on there and do that. And as always, guys, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for your prayers, your support, your giving to this ministry, your, your intercessions. You'll never know how much of a blessing that it is to us and to, and to my family and to this ministry. With your help, guys, I believe that the End Time Headlines is going to reach far more people than it ever did in the previous years. We're going to expand, we're going to enlarge, and we're going to keep reaching out beyond the United States and reaching people all over the world. And it's through your contributions, your blessings, your prayers, and your support to this ministry. So again, we're going to, we're going to sign off for today, but we're going to, Lord willing, we'll be back on here Wednesday. Um, you guys continue to pray for me for complete physical healing. Um, I've had to make some dietary changes more and more and more so uh, to the, uh, to, to calm my stomach down again from, uh, there was a little bit of side effects from antibiotics that flared up some stuff, but we're coming out of that in Jesus name and it's all good. And to God be the glory. So we love you guys. God bless you. We'll see you.